Good day and welcome to the NetSuite CPQ overview session. My name is Kevin Clare, Senior Solution Consultant for NetSuite. It is my pleasure to be leading you through the demonstration today regarding the NetSuite CPQ. NetSuite offers two core software options in the CPQ area. They are the configurator and guided selling, both of which will be covered in this session today. NetSuite offers additional add-on functions to enhance the core solution selected. Those offerings are the proposal generator, manufacturing, and two options for e-commerce, NetSuite's Suite Commerce integration and an e-commerce integration for other websites. Common challenges that CPQ will assist with are eliminating the manual quoting process, reducing inaccurate quotes and orders by your sales team, removing the inefficiency in your sales to delivery process with consideration for manufacturing, and protecting against over discounting and margin loss. A few key benefits for using a CPQ tool are listed here. Those include enabling your sales team to quickly configure price and quote complex products and services, Quotes and products are accurate and reliable directly within the NetSuite software. CPQ works seamlessly with your NetSuite ERP, CRM, and e-commerce solutions. CPQ uses NetSuite's pricing, inventory, profitability, and workflows already built into NetSuite. You'll also get dynamically generated bills of material as well as routing and work orders produced by using the CPQ tool. CPQ will automate processes that were previously manual. We'll also create accurate and branded proposals that your sales team can share with your customers and provides a simple way to configure products on your e-commerce website if needed. Let's go ahead and take a look at the CPQ software solution. CPQ is able to be launched, as we mentioned, from any type of sales order transaction, estimate, or quote, as well as from your e-commerce solution that you use or select. Today's demonstration, we're going to be accessing CPQ from the perspective of a sales rep. So here's a sales order with our customer already entered. And where we would normally enter line items down at the bottom of the sales order form, you'll notice we've got our configure button now where we can walk through the configurator, configure a product and add that to our sales order. When we launch the configurator, we now have a form where we can lay out different product options, questions and answers to walk us through building that or configuring that product Meanwhile, validating that all of the choices selected are able to be passed on to manufacturing to be able to create this product. So to start with on the left, you can offer up different selections. In this case, we call it a series where we can lay out a base configuration with maybe some base options. You'll notice the image in the upper right corner also updates as we make our selections. That image will update along the way so that visually we can decide if that's the option that we would like before we move forward. We also get a validations area where based on selections we'll make through this demonstration, the software is checking to make sure again that everything fits together, that uh, everything is validated before it allows us to go ahead and add this product to our sales order. And then at the bottom, you'll notice that it's going to outlay different information related to the product that we're building as well as pricing information. So based on selecting our first series, again, we get a base layout with, in this case, an L-shaped configuration. We can easily switch and select different options from this base configuration, and you'll notice the image updates. The base configuration also includes certain dimensions, in this case, a width, a depth, and a height with other options and selections that we're offering for our sales rep and or our customer to select. And then if you do have additional options, such as what is this product made out of, possibly different colors, uh, we can select those or offer those options. And you'll see again, that's represented in the image if we make any of those choices. 
And then finally, in our base configuration, we can determine, do we want to just simply select from a pre-configured package, maybe a base package, premium or deluxe package, or do we want to build this per particular item from the ground up and do a truly custom build? And you can do it either way. We'll start with a base configuration and make some changes or configurations from there. Again, our validation area on the right is simply keeping track of the selections we've made, allowing us to move forward and understand if we need to make any additional choices. In this case, I've got a couple of secondary options where I can go ahead and select, no, I wanna just use the base package, the validation, checks and says configuration complete, which would allow me to add this item to my order. Or in our case, we're gonna go ahead and select that we want to customize this product further, which we'll notice will update our validation and it's gonna add additional options for us to choose from right below. So as we do that, my validation now tells me, okay, go ahead and continue customizing. My product options now are available for me and I can make any additional selections such as things like uh, frame style in this case, different colors for the frames. If I want to include additional drawers, whether that be utility drawers or cabinet style drawers. And again, as I make those selections, you'll notice that the image over on the right updates with my selection. And if I wanted to, I could also make some other changes, which the validation will keep an eye on that and tell me if I've selected something that's not compatible with a previous choice. In this case, because of the overall width of our desk, uh, we cannot go with a, a utility drawer that's 16 inches. And again, we can give some helpful tips on the screen. That's gonna tell me based on a previous selection that a 16 inch drawer is not gonna work. So I can simply back that down to an acceptable option and my validation is cleared. You'll also notice that if I decide in this case that I'm giving my customer options and they decide they want more cabinet style drawers, so they make a selection of two, that's going to systematically uh, decide where that second set of drawers is gonna go based on what we've given for options again. And you'll also notice that it overrides the ability to have that other option, in this case, a utility drawer. Again, bi-directionally, uh, we are validating our choices. So once I remove that second set of cabinets, it again allows me to confirm I want a utility drawer. And again, I can continue to make my choices and configure this particular product. As we move down into other options that are available, we're gonna go ahead and add in another feature here, in this case, a plastic grommet. Visually, it's represented on our image on the left. I can choose my position of where I want that new option to be uh, added to this particular desk or this item. And as I add other items, you'll also notice that our validation is continually working in the background to let me know that in this case, my wire management is only able to be positioned in the middle. So my grommet that I've added cannot go in the middle. I have to go ahead and update that and move it to either the left or the right if I wanna keep it in my validation is once again cleared. At this point, I'll just point out that there's this audit button at the top, which is where the system is dynamically building out that bill of material that we mentioned earlier. So as I make my selections, that list, that bill of material is being added. So dynamically, I added a grommet and wire management. We can see here that is being dynamically added to my bill of material as well as the routings. Again, as I make those changes, my routing is built out, including any new options we've added, in this case, cutting that grommet hole. So this will then turn into a work order that my manufacturing staff are able to actually produce. As we move on, I have the ability again to be able to see on the right, uh, that part being built out, any of my promos or pricing that are related to the options I've selected. And then ultimately, if I have additional accessories that can be added, to this configuration, whether they need to check for compatibility with the configured item, or if I just wanna show my entire item catalog, uh, I can do that again. So my customer, or in this case, sales rep can make those choices. And this is where the integration with your item master or item library is important because it's simply pulling from the items, the descriptions, the prices, and if I have images loaded for those particular items, they're all displayed here for me as well. As I add that accessory, now again in my pricing area, I can see that accessory has been added. It updates my uh, overall pricing. 
And the final piece that I want to show here is because I'm logged in as a sales rep, all of my permissions attached to my role are enforced through to the configurator. So for example, I can offer pricing based on different permissions I'm given. In this case, I have two different levels assigned to me as far as permissions go. So we'll go ahead and use my sales rep permissions, which give me the ability to offer discounts by a percentage, a dollar amount, or a dollar override. In this case, we'll select percentage and offer this customer a 35% discount. Again, our validation is continually checking and making sure that everything is okay based on rules and permissions. And we see here that the maximum discount offered or that I'm able to offer is 30% based on my role and my permissions. So a 35% discount is not eligible to be offered here. So I can go ahead and back that down to anything up to the maximum, in this case, 30%, which clears that validation. It also adds that as a line item here and it updates my overall price that I can offer. At this point, since all of my validations are clear, I can submit and close. And this now adds this particular item to my sales order or to my quote, which I can then share with my customer. Now we added this custom desk and our accessory via the configurator, but we could also offer guided selling as another option. And guided selling is going to allow you to take your entire catalog and through a couple of more simplified filters allow you to narrow down to the product that you're looking for. So in this case, we're gonna start with all of our desks again. This will load three pages from our catalog or a total of 25 different items. And as I make my filter or selections on the left, notice how it is now narrowing that down to two pages or 19 items. As I add another filter, I'm now at five items, and ultimately I could select from this group or continue to narrow this down and add that item to my order as well. If I wanted to, I could just real quickly go back and show uh, that I could start with, again, uh, some of my filters. And if I chose, I could add that configure button. So that same concept of starting with a package and then making additional configurations, um, I could do that as well here as an option. And when we're back out on the sales order, we can see now that guided selling desk has been added to my sales order as well. At this point, we now are ready to save that order or save the quote. We're gonna share this with our customer so the customer can review it and either give us approval or ask us to make changes. So that brings us to the proposal generator. If I go back to that particular order, and go back down to the bottom, I'll notice another button here of proposal. And that's gonna bring me into an area that has one or more templates, depending on my quoting scenarios that I could utilize, which will pull in the information that we just created on the order through the configurator and or guided selling. And you'll notice the proposal generator is simply a branded document where I can add images or branding, maybe even some marketing material, it's going to pull in my sales or quote information, customer date, and then of course the item that we just configured, as well as those accessories or items we added through guided selling. Since we started with a customer at the very beginning of this process, it can also be set up to pull in customer specific payment terms, for example, as well as terms and conditions that we might wanna share with this proposal. Of course, at the end of the day, we want to turn this into a PDF and share this with our customer to get that feedback, ultimately get that approval so we can move forward. Once we have created the sales order, sent it to the customer, the customer sent that back to us, we can now go in and convert any approved sales orders or even specific line items to a work order so we can pass that information on to manufacturing and manufacturing can go ahead and produce that item so that we can fulfill the customer's order. When we do that, we have, uh, of course, that just as we do in NetSuite in general, all of our documents are linked to their source transactions. So my work order that was created is related to that sales order. And if I go to the work order, that work order also is related or attached to that sales order. And of course, to tie it all together at the end of the day here, 
we're now going to go ahead and see this work order has that dynamic bill of material that was generated with all of the items based on how we configured that product laid out here. So we have our items that we will use as raw material on that work order. And on our operations tab, I've got the ability to see the routings that were dynamically built as well when we configured that particular item. So manufacturing can take this as is, go ahead and manufacture this item without the thought or, or the problem of running into an item they can't uh, produce because the validations during the configuration already took that into consideration before we passed it on as a work order. With that said, in summary, what you're going to be able to achieve with your CPQ tool through NetSuite is being able to streamline your current quoting process, driving accuracy in your quotes and your orders, create an efficient sales to manufacturing to delivery process, simplify the selection of products by your customers or your sales rep, whoever that end user is that's using the CPQ tool, and validate your discounts and protect against margin loss on products quoted by your sales reps with those roles uh, attached to permissions, et cetera. Thank you for your time and attention today, allowing me to review the features and benefits of using the NetSuite CPQ tool to meet your business needs.